Well, hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Krista. It is good to be with you today. I'm actually coming to you from my living room. I know this is a little bit different than the way we usually do things on Wednesday nights, but I wanted to just share with you from here and do something a little bit different tonight. So welcome to our worship time together. We're still going to do the same things. We'll be reading scripture. We'll share in some prayer. I'm going to share some thoughts with you on a psalm for a pandemic and then we will sing together. So uh, my prayer is that this will be encouraging and comforting for you. We are certainly in a unique time. And so I wanted to share this Psalm with you. It's actually one of my favorites. And this is uh, from Psalm 131. It's the whole thing. It's a short Psalm. And uh, it has meant a lot to me over the years. And I'll share with you why in just a little bit. So this is a Psalm of a sense of David. This is what it says. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, these are comforting words. It is good to come into your presence this evening as we pray and share scripture and worship together to remember that you hold us like a mother holds her weaned child, that we can find rest and comfort in you. We pray that you would calm the anxious thoughts in our hearts and minds tonight, particularly this week and next as the school boards in uh, in these communities around us are making decisions about what the school year is going to look like in the midst of much uncertainty. Lord, I pray for wisdom for them and for all of us who await those decisions that we would remain steadfast in our faith in you, knowing that our children are held in your hands and that you love them and that they are safe. And so, Lord, in whatever way, we pray that we would be encouragements to each other. We continue to pray for those who put themselves in harm's way for our benefit, uh, those who work in uh, those high-risk areas. Lord, we pray that you would protect and keep them safe. We also pray for the leaders of our community and our nation and world. Lord, we pray for wisdom, that they would govern rightly and well. Um, Lord, we, um, we are in your hands, and so we trust you. We ask that you continue to guide us through your Holy Spirit. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, when Pastor Pete told me we were doing a Wednesday night series on Psalms for a pandemic, I said, awesome, bring it on. (laughs) I love the Psalms I have for many, many years. They have been good companions for me uh, through hard times and good times. I hope that you have been finding through this series that they can be that for you as well. And this particular psalm is one that I've loved for many years. It is just such a good image of trust and reliance on God in difficult circumstances when we may be tempted to allow our minds to race and the questions to come and the doubts to assail us to remember that God is our God and that God goes ahead of us. Um, And so that's, that's a good word for us. And it makes me think about... A weaned child. It's interesting that this psalm doesn't say a baby or an infant with its mother. A weaned child. So not an infant, not a (laughs) grown-up. And it made me think about my son, uh, because, of course, my son is 13. And just remembering when I I nursed him for the last time. He was about five months old. And... uh, And I just realized I'd never been one of those moms that did it really great with that. So about five months in, I realized, okay, this has probably run its course. So I decided one particular day that was going to be the last time. And I remember sitting with him in the recliner and just savoring every moment of that experience, knowing that this really was the time when I was going to start letting him go. Uh, As parents, we do that every uh, Every step of the way, our kids get further and further away from us and become more and more the people they're meant to be. Even though we will never stop being their parents and they will never stop being our children, there is that journey as it should be toward independence for them. So for me, it kind of began that day. (laughs) I don't know if any of you can identify with that. And I know that he wasn't weaned at that point, 
But that began the process. That began the moment that he started the long journey of differentiation and of becoming his own person. See, whether from a bottle or from their own bodies, human mothers start their journey with their young by providing all the nutrition that they need. I mean, think about it. Babies can't even chew when they're born. They can just receive that nourishment and take it into their bodies. This is a total dependence. I mean, it's almost as if the baby is still part of the mother's body. That's how dependent babies are. But then eventually, at around six months or so, babies begin to differentiate, right? They learn to swallow thicker liquids and then very soft, mashed up foods and so on. And then eventually at around two or three, young toddlers can take their plastic spoons and get their food to their mouths and chew and swallow all by themselves. And at that point, that's the process of weaning. They become a weaned child at that point when they can eat solid food. But that's not the only part of that journey, because right around that time, children start to think for themselves, too. They start to learn what it means to be their own person. I remember when my son Lucas was around two, newly weaned, he began to say words like, no, and mine, and I do it, mommy. <laughs> that's kind of when all that started. See, weaned children, along with learning how to eat on their own, are also learning that they are their own persons, that they're learning that they're unique individuals and they have their own thoughts and wishes. But all of this is learned in the context of a loving, protective relationship with their parents. And so even in the dangerous work of exploring and growing, they are assured that they are safe and that all will be well and at least when things are working as they should. So our scripture text for today describes the relationship between us and God in these terms. We, God's people, are depicted as a weaned child who rests peacefully in the loving arms of her mother. Psalm 131 is part of a group of psalms called the Psalms of Ascent. The book of Psalms as we have it in our Bibles has 150 prayers or songs and some of them seem to be geared more toward individual prayer, and others seem to have been used as prayers for corporate worship. And a number of them are kind of grouped together in sections. And that's what this is. I particularly like this group, the Psalms of Ascent, which uh, span Psalms 120 to 134. These Psalms are kind of like the road trip songs of ancient Israel. There were three times during the year when Israelites from all over the world, uh, the Eastern world would travel to Jerusalem for the important festivals. So they would be the festivals, festival of Passover, unleavened bread, festival of weeks and the festival of booths. And tradition tells us that these were the songs, these Psalms of Ascent, these were the songs they would sing together as they traveled by family groups to the festivals. Now, I love road trips. I just went on one with my husband for our honeymoon. So I just kind of gravitate uh, toward these road trip songs. And of all of those, this one is my favorite. And I, in fact, I may go as far as to say it's my favorite psalm. It's not as well known as others like 23 or 121 or 91. But to me, it's intimate. It's short enough to memorize. And it helps me to remember that I'm loved and cared for by God, no matter what, and especially when life gets big and confusing. And I don't know about you, but it feels pretty big and confusing to me right about now. I imagine the author of this psalm, maybe a mother herself, maybe close to a young mother, or perhaps on this long journey, watching a young child as he explores, goes a little too far gets scared and runs back to his mother and then rests and ventures out again. I imagine maybe a mom holding her toddler in a quiet moment, singing the song to her as she rests. The thing though about weaned children is that they're not always peaceful. I don't know if you've noticed this about children that age, but I mean, you've heard of the terrible twos, right? And the treacherous threes. It can be pretty chaotic to have a child at that age. But you know, there's a fearlessness to it too. Kids that age are passionate 
And they're unafra- unafraid to take risks. They're unafraid to make messes and try new things because this is how they learn. But even in the midst of all that chaos, they know that when they need peace and reassurance and rest and protection, they can run back to mom or dad and we'll be there for them. You know, while scripture references to God as mother are relatively rare compared to the ones to God as father, they are there. This is one of those in Psalm 131, but others occur in places like Deuteronomy chapter 32, where God is described as a mother eagle. It says, like an eagle that rouses her chicks and hovers over her young, so God spreads his wings to take them up and carry them safely on his pinions. Or in Hosea and Isaiah, there's images of God as mother. From Isaiah 66, 13, I will comfort you there in Jerusalem as a mother comforts her child. What a beautiful image. And then in Isaiah 49, 15, the prophet says, can a mother forget her nursing child? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? But even if that were possible, God says through the prophet, I would not forget you. I would not forget you. Even if that could happen, it's not going to happen with me, God says to us, his people. So while God is often described as a father, there are many scriptures that allude to motherhood when talking about God's qualities, that God is nurturing, protective, even fiercely so, that God is compassionate, that God instructs and cares for us as a good mother does for her children. So what this psalm describes for us in its most elemental form, at its most basic, is trust. Just trust, trusting in God. We spend our whole lives long growing up. You know, as long as we're breathing in this life, we're gonna have to adapt. It's just the way things are. And change is just part of the deal. Sometimes we're reminded of it more, (laughs) like in times like this, when change seems to be happening all the time. And it's especially in times like these that we are reminded just how fragile we are and how in need we are of God. Yet God gives us the freedom to explore, the freedom to make messes, to deconstruct and to build and to discover who we are and what we're here to do. But underneath it all is that relationship of trust that we can trust God like a weaned child trusts her mother. At any time or in any place, no matter how old or young we are, we can rest peaceful and trusting in the arms of God. I don't know about you, but this has been a time when I have been tempted to think about all kinds of things that I don't know the answer to. (laughs) What's school gonna look like? I don't know. What's worship gonna look like? I don't know that either. (laughs) I would love to know, but I don't. We just don't know what things are going to look like in the future, but we know we can trust God. We know we can trust God in the midst of all the things that are changing on a daily basis around us, because no matter what, we're held. No matter what. And that is a good thing to remember. You see, we don't have to have all the answers Another way that this psalm is translated is to say, Oh Lord, my eyes are not lifted up too high. I do not consider things too great and too wonderful for me, but I have calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Israel, people of God, hope in the Lord from this time on and forevermore. See, we don't have to do this on our own. God's got us. Trust, it can be a hard thing. And it can be especially hard for those of us who grew up in fractured homes. Uh, For those who have had to, over the years, perhaps develop those defensive measures to protect ourselves when there was not adequate protection for us. We may have learned how to camouflage and hide our true selves so that we would be accepted by people who couldn't love us unconditionally. We may have learned to hide or even squash unacceptable feelings, to be nice, to keep our chin up. We may have learned all too soon what happens 
when trust is broken. And there may even be some among us who can't even imagine what it would be like to have a trusting relationship with a parent. Well, if that's you, I just want to say, let your imagination guide you. <laughs> let your imagination guide you. You may not know what that's like, but God does. God does, and God wants to give you that relationship of trust. Little by little, I want to invite you to allow yourself to be loved by God who longs to gather you under her wings like a mother hen and give you rest. Trust me, your heart will understand long before your head does. So just give it time. I know these are anxious times, but let us remember we serve a good God who loves us, who calls us his beloved children. The psalmist urges us at the end of our text to put our hope in God from now on, from this time on and forevermore. We will never stop growing. We will never stop exploring. Let's not be afraid to make messes once in a while. <laughs> Let's not be afraid to explore knowing that our God is right there when we need rest, when we need comfort, when we need a safe shelter, we can rest in that, knowing that God loves us. So I'd like to close our, uh, our meditation time in prayer, and then I want to share a song with us. So let's pray. God, it takes bravery to trust. It takes courage, especially for those of us who have known what broken trust feels like. And so in these days when it is so hard to trust, <laughs> help us to grow in our knowledge of you. Help us to run back to you, our loving God, uh, for rest and peace, to know that you are there with and for us. We give you our children. We give you all of the situations in our lives that are causing us anxiety and worry. We give you our jobs. We give you our homes and our bills. Lord, all of the things that weigh heavy on our hearts right now. For those who are sick, who are struggling with physical illnesses, or those who are battling COVID-19 right now, Lord, I pray for your healing presence to overshadow and heal them. Bring them back to wholeness, Lord, we pray. Restore broken hearts and broken relationships. Bring us back to you, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So nothing fancy music-wise, there is a very simple chorus. I have no accompaniment, <laughs> but I want to sing it, and I want to allow you to sing it with me if you would like to. Uh, the words are very simple, and so I just want you to sing it with me and uh, allow this to be our prayer. Now, there were many times when Lucas was very little, uh, particularly when he was around that two to three age and before, and for a while after, I would sit with him in my lap and sing to him. So uh, this is kind of, let us imagine that we are sitting in the lap of God and that God is uh, hearing these words and singing them with us. So if you know this song, it's called Be Still and Know. Well, let's sing it together. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that he My boundless mercy shall endure. My boundless mercy. 
mercy shall endure my boundless mercy shall endure my boundless mercy shall endure I love you with a steadfast love I love you with a steadfast love. I love you with a steadfast love. I love you with a steadfast love. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. 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 Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be blessed tonight. Be blessed this week. We look forward to continuing in worship with you on Sunday morning. Take care.